Hi, this is question six from the AQA Mechanics 1 January 2012 exam paper. For the first part of this video, I'd like you to try the question yourself. So if you'd like to pause the video now and give it a go. Okay, well done if you managed to have a go at the question. I'm now going to give you a hint as to how you can go about answering the question. So we've got a cyclist at three wheels with a constant acceleration in a straight line down the slope. As the cyclist moves 50 metres, his speed increases from 4 metres per second to 10 metres per second. For part A, we want to find the acceleration of the cyclist. Well, we know the, um, the, the displacement of the cyclist is 50 metres, and we also know that his speed increases from 4 metres per second to 10 metres per second. Um, so we know his initial and final velocity we should be able to use that to work out the acceleration. For part two, it says find the time um, that it takes cyclists to travel um, this distance. And again, we can use our SUVAT equations. Um, and because we know that the acceleration is going to be constant, um, we can work out the time taken as well. Part B says the cyclist has a mass of 70 kilograms we want to calculate the magnitude of the resultant force acting on the cyclist. So for this part here, um, we want to use F equals MA. We know, um, we know that it has a mass of 70 kilograms. We'll have worked out what its acceleration is, so we should be able to use that to work out the resultant force. Part C says the slope is inclined at an angle alpha to the horizontal. We first of all need to find alpha um, if it is assumed that there is no resistance force acting on the cyclist. Well, if we draw a diagram um, and we mark on all of the forces, we already know that there's a that the ma magnitude of the resultant force is this here. Yeah, we'll have already worked that out. Um, so that's going to be equal to any forces that occur on our uh, um, force diagram. We should then be able to use that information to work out the angle alpha of the slope. For part two, um, we need to find alpha, uh, and it's assumed that there is a constant resistance force of magnitude 30 newtons acting on the cyclist. Well, um, again, in the same way as we did with part A, if we if we mark on all the forces onto our diagram, um, we know that the net force. Um, has to be equal, sorry, the resultant force has to um, be equal to um, what we found in part B. Um, and then we should have enough information there to work out alpha, um, which is the angle of the slope. Finally, part D said make a criticism of the assumption described in this part here. Um, so I'll, I'll let you think about um, that for yourself. Um, bear in mind that we're saying that it's a constant resistance force. Okay, um, if you'd now like to pause the video and see if you can have a go at answering the question. Okay, I'm now going to go over the solution um, to the question. So starting with part A, We want to find the, um, so part one of part A, we want to find the acceleration of the cyclist. Well, we, um, if we use our um, SUVAT equation, so I'm just going to write the word SUVAT over here. And I know that my um, S is going to be 50 meters. That's how far it's travelled. The speed increases from 4 metres per second to 10 metres per second. So um, my initial speed is 4 metres per second. My final speed is 10 metres per second. And my acceleration is what we're trying to find out, and my time is what we're going to try and find out in, in part two. So um, I could start by saying, well, the, the equation that I'm going to use um, to work out what A is, is V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. 
and if I sub all this information in I've got a hundred is equal to sixteen plus two times fifty times a so that's going to be plus a hundred a and that works out for a to be zero point eight four meters per second per second okay um, part two we want to work out what the time is okay so over here I've worked out that this is 0 0.84 okay part two we want to work out what the time is well um, I could use um, V is equal to U plus 80 and I know that V is 10 and U is 4 so I've got 10 is equal to 4 plus and A is 0 0.84 so it's going to be 0 0.84 T um, which means 0 0.84 T is equal to 6 and T is going to be equal to 6 divided by 0 0.84 which is 7.1 seconds okay so um, that's part A done and dusted um, part B says um, the cyclist has a mass of 70 kilograms and we want to calculate the magnitude of the resultant force acting on the cyclist so for part B we're going to use F equals MA and we're told that the mass is 70 kilograms and we know the acceleration is 0 0.84 meters per second per second so I can say well my um, the magnitude of my resultant force is going to be equal to um, 70 times 0 0.84 so that's going to be equal to um, 58.8 newtons Okay, part C. Um, we've got a slope that is inclined at an angle alpha to the horizontal. We need to find alpha if it's assumed that there is no resistance force acting on the cyclist. So I'm going to start by drawing a diagram over here. Um, so we're going to have a slope and we're trying to work out the angle in our slope over here um, and we've called that alpha uh, we've got our cyclist that's going to be on the slope and there's going to be a a weight acting down um, which is going to be 70g there's going to be a reaction force on the cyclist that's going to be going in this direction and um, we're told that there's no friction um, so we've got nothing there for the time being um, but we know that the direction of motion is this way and we've got an acceleration of 0 0.84 meters per second okay so um, we know that the resultant, so the magnitude of the um, resultant force on the cyclist is um, what we worked out earlier as 58.8 newtons and the only force that's going to be affecting us uh, parallel to the slope is going to be um, this force here and the component of this force here that's going to be parallel um, to the slope and if I quickly draw myself a um, so we've got our um, 70g here um, and then we've got a component of that that's going to be parallel to the slope and we're going to have a component of that that's going to be perpendicular to the slope this angle here is alpha so it's going to be 70g sine alpha 
that's going to be parallel to the slope. So I've got 58.8 .8 is equal to 70g sine alpha. And you might have just spotted that through a different method. Um, OK, so, um, so that means that sine alpha is going to be equal to 58.8 .8 divided by 70g. Um, and that works out to be 0 0.0857 and that means alpha is going to be the inverse sine of that um, which is 4.92 degrees okay so that was the first part of part C for the second part of part C this time we've got the added complication because we're told that there is a constant resistance force of magnitude 30 newtons acting on the cyclist. So there's something that's um, going at a magnitude of 30 newtons in that direction there. So we're just going to mark this onto the diagram. So this is now going to tell us that we've got a um, resistive force um, of magnitude 30 newtons. So we're going to do the same as what we did in the first part. We had 58.8 .8 is equal to 70g sine alpha, just as we had before. But this time, we've got this resistance force um, that we need to take away. So that's going to be take away 30, which means that 88.8 .8 is going to be equal to 70g sine alpha um, so sine alpha is going to be equal to um, 88.8 .8 over 70g and that works out to be 0 0.129 and um, alpha is going to be the inverse sine of that um, which works out to be 7.44 degrees okay and and there you go so and, and that makes sense because the angle here um, would 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 be slightly bigger would need to be slightly bigger to maintain the the same acceleration that we had before if there's this resistive force okay part D says uh, make a criticism of the assumption described in part C2 um, well we've said that it's a constant resistance force of magnitude 30 Newton now in fact if you imagine yourself um, freewheeling down a hill um, as, as you're freewheeling down the faster you go the more you will feel the wind in your face and, and, and the harder you will feel the wind in your face um, and that's because there's going to be a an increase in the resistance as you go faster um, and the assumption that we've made here is that it's constant which which is not going to be the case so our criticism we could write as the um, what we could say the air resistance Uh, would increase as the speed increases okay and and there you go okay thanks very much for joining me i look forward to seeing you again soon take care